In this video, a married couple, Marius and Marisa, asked me to guide them through the TRE process, teaching them how to make interventions on each other so that they could work together as a couple and learn how to use TRE effectively with themselves and in some ways establish a different type of relationship with themselves. So you're gonna see in this video, I'll be guiding Marius how to make intervention on his wife, Marisa, and Marisa how to make intervention on her husband, Marius. And it was an interesting process. We went through some happy moments, some sensitive and gentle moments, some intimate moments, and we went through some transformational moments. And it was quite fascinating. So this video is only for the purpose of demonstrating how couples might be able to use TRE to help themselves grow in their own bodies and potentially grow in relationship with one another in a different way. Okay, well, I started, I had one group session um, of TRE and it was so profound in that I'm, I'm a bit of a control person. So what happened is they told me is my, my body's going to automatically release. And I thought, we'll see what happens. And um, what happened was so profound for me that I had to go and and research it and do a bit of um, look into the science after, uh, behind it. And then I, I got to your website and I got to the TRE provider um, training course and obviously I enrolled. And after I enrolled, I started with my true process and um, I did it in my house, in my home, and um, my wife, I told my wife about this. And as soon as I started, I, um, I immediately had this feeling of groundedness and, and oneness with myself. So much so that I, I wanted more of this tremor. And I started sleeping better. In actual fact, I was able to go off of my medication for sleeping aid. Even my, my bowel uh, became more regular. And as somebody that struggled with, with ulcer problems, that was amazing for me. That was huge. So I went through the whole kind of a detox. And it was so wonderful that I started telling everybody. And when we came to case studies, my wife was so intrigued. And she'll tell you her story now that she said, OK, she will do the case study. And we started with her process from there and that's how we, the two of us started working together. When Morris told me he wanted to do the TRE, um, I fully supported him from day one. And um, when I started enrolling in the TRE as well, taking part in it, I could also uh, realize a lot of major changes within my body. And actually the first two sessions, I laughed from my stomach. So it was very enjoyable, it was very funny and fun to do it as a couple and, um, and I also try to support him by doing the TRE so I can tell other people by doing it because for some other reason people are reluctant to this idea of TRE. Um, whereas I feel that if you're open-minded and you know what it's about, your body will automatically just open up to it. TRE has become one of our couples um, things that we do together, together and we actually started looking forward to it as soon as the baby is asleep at night we allocate an hour quickly do a few tremors and obviously sleep much better afterward and um, you really start looking forward to it at the end of the day. I've just learned how to um, tremor However, the tremors does not move past my um, waist, so hopefully we'll be able to sort that out soon. Okay, look, we can see lots of energy in her legs, and they actually rotate her hips, which is already an indicator that the shaking mechanism is loosening the lower back. So it's actually trying to come up your spine. So this is a good indicator that this is gonna work. Even this little bit of talking, I can see that it's slowly moving up your spine because the twist is getting bigger. Okay. So look how your left leg moves different than your right leg. 
Have you had an injury of any kind? Um, I've, I've, uh, when I was pregnant, I had like a, a nerve that was stuck. So I'm not sure if, but it's on my right side. And normally it feels as if it can't get past on my right side. But that's exactly why your right side isn't moving. So your left side has freedom to move, but the right side can't do it. Yes. So let's try a self-intervention before we have Marius make an intervention on you. I want you to move your right leg the same way that your left leg is moving. Yeah, yeah, you're doing fine. You're just going to imitate with your right leg what the left leg is doing. We're going to try to get them to talk to each other. There you go. Look at you. See that? Look at your right hip moving like that. You go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it actually feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right hip socket is releasing. I can see it. All right, you're just going to lay there and let that happen. We have to give the body time to learn this new pattern that it just developed. It's really releasing your right hip. Mm. I can feel it working on my right hip as well. It's tight, but I can also feel there's actually a lot more movement going on there than usual. That's amazing, really. The little bit of work you did and your body just responded immediately to you. Okay, so Marius, you're going to do an occipital ridge release with her. Do you know how to do that? No, no, David, you can just guide me. Yep, you take both hands and you slide them under her head, and at the base of the skull, you're gonna turn your fingers up and gently pull her head towards you. That's it, just like that. And then I just hold it there. Just hold it there for about seven seconds. That's just gonna gently stretch her neck and the spinal column, and we're gonna to try to tease the tremor mechanism to come up the body. After seven seconds, I release. Yes. Good job. And see what you just did? See the flexibility coming further up her back now? Definitely. It is here for I'm just telling Morris that I did have a bit of soreness here on my right side. Pulling there at the, the core of my back, basically. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, David, she was just uh, telling me that she had a bit of a lower back pain at the core of the spine. Um, usually, I put a towel there that makes it better. Um, I don't know if it's part of the releasing process. Yes, that's a perfect thing to do. So, if the towel works to help release the pain, then go ahead and put a towel there. Yeah. Net, net is so on my rug, just okay. below my back. I sit on the rug, on the stake, I'll put it just here underneath the back at the um, end of the spine. Is it fine if we do it like that, David? It's perfect. If okay. we do anything we need to to release pain, so because we're not trying to push the body to do anything, we're trying to make it comfortable so it will release itself. Okay, so look what we have here. Look at that nice movement, even a little bit in the shoulder, girl. Can you see that? Yes, I can feel it. Okay, so now, Marius, we're going to help her shoulders open up a little bit more because I think they're pretty loose and we could get more movement because when the hip joint loosens, the shoulder joint will loosen also as a way to stay in alignment with each other because the pelvic girdle and shoulder girdle are connected. Okay. So the way you're going to do this, Marius, is you're going to take your right hand Listen, to, you're going to go to her right side. Okay. <clears throat> so you're going to slide underneath her shoulder between the shoulder blade and the spinal column. 
Okay. So slide your hand under there, and then you're going to point your fingers upward, and you're going to see if there's a place of tension. And Marisa, you help him know, does he have to move his fingers up or down, closer to your spine or further away? Because there's usually a knot in there. No, no. There. Yeah, okay. there you go. Found it. Great. So keep your fingers there for about 10 seconds. Marisa, take a deep breath, let out a sigh. See how her body's reacting to that? There you go. Let go now. Yeah. She says she's feeling the release. Good, yeah, we can see that. Look at that. See, bigger hip movement. It's going to loosen the shoulder girdle. That's beautiful. That's it. Hold her. Just be her spouse. <laughs> Follow your body. And Marius, you hold her like a husband would hold a concerned spouse. That's it. That's it. Let her keep crying, Marius, until the crying's over. It will finish. Okay. Don't try to stop it too soon. Let it just keep happening. Okay. David, I'm just helping uh, regulating the breathing. Um, David, that is the, the biggest release we've had ever. And um, knowing my wife, as just a bit of a backstory, she does not cry ever. So that's a major release. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, never apologize for that. I mean, you just came to life. How could you apologize for coming to life? Well, that's actually very beautiful. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. So I actually just had a major release, release, um, and we've struggled quite a while with this because the movement will only move up to my hips. But tonight the movement um, proceeded all the way up to my shoulders, and in an instant I could feel a major release within myself, and I just started weeping, but. With a sad because of everything that happened, but also with relief. Um, so it, it was very, very good. Actually, felt very good, and I sobbed. But um, I actually hope to maybe feel that experience again, maybe get another release just to get it all out of my system one day. Yeah. Two. To me, it was um, amazing as knowing my wife, she is not one to cry. So when she cried, I immediately knew this was huge for her. This was a major release for her. But I think also as a couple to, to work through this and see this and having this release, um, being there for each other, being able to console each other um, was quite amazing. Mm. I think it's amazing. But, uh, if I can just add one other thing is that physically my lungs feel open. It's like I can take my first breath again because lately I've been f feeling a lot of pressure on my lungs and um, weakness. But because of that eruption, that crying, it, just feels like a whole new breath I took while crying. 
And okay. I want to remember to tell you the crying was nothing but the diaphragm pulsation. So yeah. finally, your diaphragm was able to release. See, yes. and because it was also a different kind of crying, it was it wasn't the normal sobbing, a sad crying. It it was sad because I knew there was a lot behind it, but it was it opened my diaphragm. I I can feel that. See, that's why I tell people, don't be worried about whether you're crying or laughing or whatever, because when you laughed the first time, that was the beginning of the diaphragm pulsating, okay? Uh -huh. And now that we were able to move the tremors through the diaphragm, mm -hmm. it now pulsated again. This time it presented itself as crying, it could have just as easily have been laughing. Oh, wow. Okay. You okay. see? The diaphragm yeah. doesn't know the difference between laughter or crying. It just knows it needs to pulsate. That's its way of tremoring. So All right, well now, Maurice, it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> Let's lay down and tremor and see what we can get to happen here. Yeah, okay, can I do Okay, David, you will guide my wife with whatever's needed. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never done this before. <laughs> Where I no, you thinking. saw how simple the interventions were that he made. You could easily do those as well. Okay. All right, so you're like, I'm just going to do the pelvic lift, David. Go just ahead. All right, let me ask you, Marius, do you feel any place where there's a tightness or a constriction? You know what, uh, David, it's, it's here in the back area, on the spine. It uh -huh. feels like it's, it's swaying a lot. It's not doing that nice snake movements. Um, right, right. Okay. It's like my body is fighting with my spine or something. You know, my legs get tired. I don't know if it's because it's pushing, it feels like it's pushing my, my buttocks up. Right. Um, so actually just my legs get tired. There's no special pain. But now I have to tell you, I've been stuck like this for a few, few times as, um, as it feels like it's not releasing. It just keeps on with this vigorous movement. Okay, slide your legs down flat. Because that is a huge amount of movement. So we gotta <laughs> figure out how to slow this thing down. All right, do you get any shaking down into your feet or ankles? Um, usually, when I put my feet straight without stretching my soles, my feet will shake. And okay. as a norm, I've got restless feet. So, oh, really? yeah, so through the most part of the day, my feet will be, be going. Oh, interesting. We're going to start with your feet and your ankles. So, I want you to push your toes away from you. <laughs> That's no. it. There you go. That's good enough. Now point them towards you. And keep doing that about 10 times. We're going to try to bring these tremors down into your legs more so that we can slow down the movement that's going up your body. OK, good. So we can see your feet moving. Yeah, it feels like it wants to also go vigorously, but it's just like Right. Okay, so um, Marisa, what you're going to do is go to his right leg okay. and you are going to put your hands underneath the bottoms, uh, let me see, uh, under his calf muscles. And you're going to squeeze them really tight. Yeah. So put, no, put one hand around. That's it. Now squeeze them really tight. Yeah. See yeah. 
it actually feels very nice. No, just wait. Okay, that, that's good enough. So we're just going to see, did that intervention make a difference? We're just going to watch his body. Yeah. See, we're looking for this smaller movement like this. That's beautiful. Take a deep breath with that. It's, it's weird, but it feels like it's a slow swaying movement, almost like the snaky movement, um, not literally down the spine. Um, it's just this comfortable um, swaying, if I can describe it like that. But I don't know how it looks, but it feels like a million small impulses at the same time. But but slow ones. So now, okay, Marisa, you're gonna go do his other calf muscle as well. So come around to the other side. Can I start from the middle down and then up? Yeah, it doesn't matter, just as long as you do the whole calf muscle. What's producing that movement? Where's it coming from in your body? Can you feel that? Feels like my my buttocks. I think is right. Yeah. The other one. Good. Okay. So now, um, Marisa, go to his other side. What? Now there's a muscle called the quadratus lumborum. It connects the lower spine with the top of the hip bone. So slide your hand under there very close to his spine, but you should be able to feel the top of the hip bone as well. So it's going to be down very low down the spinal column. That's it. Okay, now point your fingers up in there. And Marius, you see if there's any pain in that muscle. It almost feels, it, it's got a, a numbing feeling. Uh-huh. Feels numb, so I can't actually really feel the presses. Mm -hmm. um, there's no pain as well. Right. So you're just going to lay there and rest, and we'll see if your body responds to that intervention. It actually feels good. Can you describe what you mean by it feels good? It feels like after the pressure has released, it feels like it's like the numbness went away, and I put better feeling of my legs, if that makes sense. Um, there's a, it feels like I had a, a release, actually. All right, you're just, just gonna lay there, because I, I, we know it's gonna start back up, so we'll just be patient with it. Because I wanna see how it moves now. Does it move differently? And it does. Do you see that? Oh. And look how it's pulling on the right side. Huh? I've had this before where my whole arm would pull up, but not on the left side, only on the right. It's yep. like it's behind the shoulder blade, there's like a knot. All right, Something. then you know what to do with that, Marisa. The same thing he did with you. Behind the shoulder blade, find the knot and push into it. I can, I can actually feel the muscle pushing back onto my fingers. Perfect, perfect. Then just stay there because it's negotiating with you. So this is where you and his body are sort of talking to each other. So just stay there until the dialogue changes. And what will happen is his body will move. Okay, now you can let go.
I've got this feeling of uh, almost like a pins and needles up okay. in, the, in this neck uh, muscle here. Okay, so, great. So turn your head to your left and Marisa, you use your thumb and go from his shoulder up his neck where he says he feels the pins and needles. Okay. Or you could use your fingers, whatever you want to, but just, and that's it, trace that pattern. You're just gonna open up the neck muscle. That's beautiful, actually. He doesn't feel pins and needles anymore. Okay, fine, then you've done your job. Just relax. We'll see how the body responds to that intervention. Okay. You know the same thing you did with his calf muscles? I want you to do it with his right arm, all the way okay. from the top of the arm, all the way down to his wrist. Squeeze okay. it very tight. Now I saw you with a shoulder blade. And now yeah. Yeah, start right up there. Go over the shoulder and down the arm. Yeah, it's, it's much more relaxed, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, much yeah. Moving almost. Exactly. It's a deeper hip movement than you had earlier. So we're, we're doing it. We're following the pattern. It's revealing it to us. So we're trying to help work with it right there, that hip movement, where your legs kind of pull up and down into the hip socket, that's different. Do you feel that one? Yes, I, I still feel like it wants to run away, but then the body reins it in again. That's exactly right. My theory behind that is, is it's looking for how to move that energetic charge in the easiest way possible, but we're forcing it to go down deeper and so it's struggling to release at a deeper level. It would prefer to just explode out, but that's yes. not what we want it to do. Right there, that hip movement is so much different. It's much calmer now though. Yeah, yeah. It's calmer because we went deeper. And so now the energetic flow can go deeper through the body, whereas before it couldn't go down deep enough, so it just exploded in the surface of the body. It's like my, my arm is starting to liven up. Yes, that's what we're going to try to do. We'll get them both to come alive. See how nice, see, once those tremors go down your arms, it'll reduce the amount of movement in the shoulders because all this shaking went into the shoulders because it couldn't go into the arms. But look how nice your, your hand is moving. So why don't you do that same thing to his left arm as well? <coughs> David, is there a reason that the tremor slows down when there's pressure on the, on the um, muscle, is it? Yeah, what's happening is she's making an intervention into a pulsating living organism. And so she's like poking the organism and it's trying to negotiate, is this good? Is this safe? Is this all right? What do I do? So she's actually communicating with a pulsating organism. And that's why after I make an intervention, I tell people, okay, now just wait and see how the body responds to that. Okay. After, uh, after the interventions, it's like quiet for a few seconds and then yes. it starts up. Almost always, because it's negotiating, because she changed the tissue in your arm. So now it means, oh, that tremor might move differently as a result of that. So it's figuring out another pathway. This slower movement is much better for you. It's going deeper inside your body, Marius. That's what's gonna help you begin to feel there's a release. Oh, look at that it's beautiful flow. It's actually feeling amazing as it, it 
gives me, and I, I've always struggled to describe this, in the beginning of TRE, it gives you this feeling of immense oneness. I don't know how to describe it better. It's like, almost like you're floating on water, like a calmness. Um, I don't know if it's a numbness in the body, but it's this calmness that overflows you, actually. See, you are, it's not numbness at all. You are kind of floating in your organism. But we so seldom feel this that we don't even know how to describe it as it happens. There, see his hips. There's, we're going to do one more intervention on his hips because they're still trying to release there. So go to his other side first. That's too far. That's it, like that. Now put a little pressure on that. This Take a deep breath when she does that, Marius. That's it, now go down, that's it. There you go, like that. You let her know if it's too much. I'm trying to breathe in when she presses down and out when she releases. Yeah, go ahead. Follow, follow a rhythm for yourself, how it feels for you. It's don't... funny, there when she presses now, I don't feel anything, but when she goes down, like there, I can actually feel the muscle. Almost yeah, coming... See, that's the tightness underneath that we're trying to loosen so that the tremors can go down that far. There, that little movement, it's trying to go deeper. It's like it's sending down small impulses that swings it. That's exactly what it's doing. You're, you're really stimulating the small impulses and they should be able to help stimulate themselves bigger. It's funny, but it feels like that whole um, muscle Marisa was working on is going ice cold. It's like it's a, there's an ice pack on it now. Yeah, it's interesting. What I think that is, is you're actually feeling that it has been frozen, but it was so numb you couldn't even feel the freeze. Now you can feel the cold, and what you should feel after that is blood circulation where it gets hot. That's amazing. It's now freeing itself. We just had to help it a little bit. And look how there's no tremors in the upper part of the body. It's all down in the leg. I can actually feel the pulse from my inner thigh from, from here. Isn't that beautiful to watch, Marisa? You're looking at a living pulsating organism that's trying to figure out how to stimulate itself back to full um, stimulation, like so it can feel everything. There's no numbness no frozenness. And it's slowly working its way back to life. And I wish that's what other people can also understand from the TRE. It's not because a lot of people think it's voodoo or something, but it's much deeper than that. It's, it's the way the body moves and works and everything. Now look at his left hip. See how his left hip is starting to release there? Starting to work together now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because that's what we were going to do. We we're going to try to help the left leg if it can't join in. Now, see, there's that moment of stillness. Now, look, his left leg is trying to do exactly what the right leg was doing. But look how it's going right into his left hip. Can you see that? Yes. It's like I felt the right one was pulsating from within the, the, the inner thigh. It's like the left one is going from the bottom to the feet. Okay, perfect. They're two different tension patterns. There, now they've figured it out. See that? How they work together? Yeah. It's quite amazing, really. 
It is fascinating because it keeps reminding me we're we're inside a living organism. It's like we're inside a giant amoeba. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I can actually feel that the tremor is not so much tension based as it might have been in the beginning. It's, it's as you say, it's a much deeper, more elegant movement, <laughs> if I can say it like that. Yeah. This is my second time watching Morris and I'm still awestruck about it. And it also makes it a lot more intimate with your partner. There, see, now that it's resolved something in the legs, now it's moving up the spine a little bit more. Because yeah, it's going to try to connect the legs with the spinal column more. That's a nice gentle swaying there. And, you know, David, usually I could only go seven minutes, then I have to stop. Because it yep. totally overwhelmed me. And I mean, now it feels like I could, I could do this the whole evening because it feels amazing. It, it almost lets you feel like you're meeting the true you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stretching it out a bit. Stop it. Uh, within doing my TRE session um, with the help from Morris as well, um, I experienced it absolutely on a whole different level than previously. Um, especially where the, the tremor moved up, I could feel the different movements within my body, how it worked on my spine and in my shoulders as well. And obviously uh, getting a breakthrough and crying um, and feeling that diaphragm open up for um, for the first time in a long time. And um, working on Morris for the first time was actually a very nice experience. Um, I thought it would be difficult, I was nervous about it, but it actually made it a lot more enjoyable and with him assisting me, telling me where I should with more pressure, it also sits in me in a way to help him and, and to get the right movements at the end of the day. Um, for me, doing the TRE with Marisa, even though TRE in itself was such an extraordinary experience for me, um, doing it with my wife has, has brought things to a next level as I was able to see her release, be there to console her. And um, as she said, it, it makes me feel better. As she says, a tightening in her chest is gone. A, diaph a diaphragm was able to release. Um, she felt um, in a safe environment. Um, that all was great for me to, to observe. My own experience was amazing, as I usually had these vigorous tremors um, with Marisa's intervention and pressing on certain um, tension patterns. It, it, she managed, or we managed, to get it much deeper, and, and with the help of David as well, to get it much deeper and more in a swaying, almost in, into a, a soul oneness of, of a release. And um, cannot describe it better than that. I feel so relieved after the tremor where I usually could only do seven minutes and feel exhausted. I almost did half an hour and I feel brilliant. Thank you so much, David. It's Thank been an you. honor. It has been. It has